Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today, something a bit different for the intro because it's been a really tough year for everybody. I'm going to skip the usual joke here and I wanted to get serious with you guys and, and give you some quotes that might help you to keep things in perspective. Some philosophical quotes from the ages to help us all feel a bit better in these tough times. So here we go. The first one is from Marcus Aurelius. Be like the cliff against which the waves continually break, but it stands firm and tames the fury of the water around it. This next one is from Plato. Wise men speak because they have something to say. Fools because they have to say something. Here's another one from Aurelius. The happiness of those who want to be popular depends on others, but the happiness of the wise grows out of their own free acts. This one is from Epictetus. It is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. And this one is from Jeremy Fragrance. Not wearing underwear because it forces me to think intelligent and put my ego completely out of the way. One of the ways I push myself in different moods and states to perform at peak for different situations. Hashtag Fragrance Army. Hashtag Strength. Hashtag Freedom. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be having a look at my three favorite fragrances for mature gentlemen, or at least fragrances that smell mature. People of any age can wear and enjoy these. I love grown up smelling slightly old school type of fragrances, so much so that I created my own Fougere fragrance with the, my own new brand, Norton & Wilson, Gravitas Pour Homme. I'm not gonna include that in the list because I wanna do ones that I'm not biased about, but you can find out more about that one if you visit our website over at Norton Wilson. The link's in the description and the fragrance is still in stock in the USA, Canada, UK and the EU. So go and check it out guys if you're interested. Let's get into my three favorite fragrances at the moment for mature men. So I did a top 10 fragrances for older guys and it was they were all designer fragrances and I was gonna do another top 10 niche fragrances but I, I, for some reason I felt like less is more and this is very much a temporary list, the ones I love most at the moment. There's so many grown up fragrances in my collection and I just thought let's, let's zero in on the ones that really thrill me most at the moment. So let's get stuck into it. There's a couple that you might not expect here guys, so let me know what you think of my choices in the comments down below. So this is a relatively new acquisition, these are in no particular order. But the first one I'm going to mention today, Floris 1962 from the British House of Floris. This is a fantastic release, came out in 2016. Officially, it's classed as a citrus fragrance, but I think it's more of a sheepra fragrance. Uh, and it is a very, very beautiful and well composed fragrance indeed. I'll give you the note listing for this one. In the top, we've got green mandarin, cloves, spicy mint and bergamot. The mid notes are cypress, basil, jasmine and lily of the valley. And in the base, we have cedar, moss, musk and amber. Now the fragrance this one is very commonly compared to is Tom Ford's Italian Cypress, which I have here. And that is a very hard to find discontinued fragrance, although I think they reissued it and it was even more expensive than it used to be. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Some people have said that Floris 1962 is sort of the cologne version of this, a slightly lighter, fresher ver version. So I've got a little bit of 1962 on a card here. It's, it's got a lovely citrusy opening, but a very spicy herbal undertone in there as well, which of course to me always comes off a little bit old school with those kind of green herbal tones. And then it's got this really kind of masculine, woody, coniferous kind of undertone to the fragrance. I was quite interested actually to see what the, the blurb from the company said. They've themed it of course around the year 1962. And uh, the, the, I'll give you a bit of their blurb because I think it's relevant. They said, uh, 1962 Eau de Parfum is a fragrance of unbridled affection to an era of love, modernism and evolution. In the summer of 1962, music, art and colour had lifted Soho into a world of its own where coffee bars and rock clubs held court. Visiting London for the first time in 1962, the smells of spices, herbs and fruits welcomed your arrival into the city's bohemian quarter, they say. So uh, it's supposed to capture something of the essence of London just beginning to enter the swinging 60s in 1962. To be quite frank with you, I don't massively get that vibe from it. Um, 62 was actually pretty early. I think the Beatles only came along just about then, or was it 63? So things haven't really got going. Uh, and so I'm not going to comment on how this historically captures the essence 
1962, which some viewers may be surprised to know. I am actually slightly too young to remember, but the fragrance is beautifully well balanced between a little bit of a citrus opening, a greenness, a spiciness, and this classic kind of Chypre bitterness is in there as well. It's very, very classy. It lasts really well, it performs really well. If you can't find Tom Ford's Italian Cypress, you could find this as a very, very viable alternative. It's not a clone of it, I don't think. And I think that description that somebody gave on Fragrantica of a sort of cologne version of the same thing, a little bit more light and airy, could be a good one. But the performance actually right up there with the, the quite potent Italian Cypress. So a very elegant, spicy, green and mossy fragrance from Floris. Very, very versatile. I think if you go easy on the trigger, this one will be a good signature scent, a work scent, that kind of thing. Lovely retro vibe, but not mega dated, really in your face old school. And I think for older guys or anyone who wants to smell a little bit more grown up, no reason why a 25 year old in the office couldn't wear this. It's a classy choice, but it might appeal more to those of us 30 and upwards. Don't forget, if you'd like to join the Smelly Army Private Members Club over on Patreon, there's a link in the description to do that. It costs just $2 a month and you get an extra video from me every week. Plus you get to watch everything I've already uploaded in there. We're building a really nice community, lots of interaction, and I'd love to see you in there. Loving this stuff. Maybe it's made the top three because it's a bit new in my collection. There's other stuff that I've had ages. Fuji Royale from Hubigant. It's pretty equal with this, but I'm not as excited about that at this time in, in history. Now let's go on to the next one. Again, a relatively recent acquisition in terms of a full bottle, but I've had decants for absolutely ages. So I'm gonna pick here Invasion Bar Bar from MDCI Parfums. Let me know guys if you've got this one, if you agree with my assessment that it's an absolute classic, perfect signature scent for an older guy. So this one was released in 2005, the perfumer Stephanie Bakush. I'll give you the note listing now. Uh, the top notes for this one are grapefruit, bergamot, and violet leaf. In the mid, you have thyme, cardamom, lavender, and ginger, and the base notes are patchouli, vanilla, and musk. Price-wise, I should mention, by the way, Floris 1962, you could find that online in the UK. All Beauty has it for £99.95 for 100 mil, so quite good price for niche, really. This one, much more expensive. My 75 bottle here, uh, mill bottle retails for around about 220 pounds on some of the niche retailers so an expensive fragrance indeed got highly rated when it's, it came out and ever since it's talked about as one of the best masculine so-called barbershop fragrances it's a little bit more than that to me it's an aromatic fougere or in fact it's classified as an oriental fougere and the term oriental in perfume terms normally indicates a little bit of sweetness and maybe spiciness rather than your traditional very green maybe piney mossy fougere type fragrance and this one delivers that lovely freshness with the grapefruit and bergamot in the opening there's violet leaf in here giving it a little bit of floral complexity and that distinctive kind of tone of the violet leaf note if you know that one well you'll find some in here it's also got this very powdery vibe to me and a definite sweetness and spiciness so you, the ginger gives it i mean you wouldn't i don't pick up specifically on the note of ginger but there's a sort of subtle spiciness in there and this this feeling of an extremely expensive shaving foam or something is there to an extent but it's got a little bit more more complexity and exoticness than maybe something like Rive Gauche Pour Homme from Yves Saint Laurent, the go-to barbershop classic designer fragrance. So it's powdery, it is fresh, it's got a little bit of spiciness and it definitely has an undertone of sweetness, maybe classifying it as a bit of a neo-fougere or they're calling it an oriental fougere. Really, really classy, well-presented kind of scent. Great performance, really last ages. I sprayed this card actually for another video about a week ago and the smell is still there. I actually re-sprayed to get the top notes again, but performance very, very good I think on this one. Absolute class in a bottle. Doesn't smell dated actually, of the three, it's maybe the most timelessly elegant, or that it has a nod to the past, but it doesn't smell dated, dated. Very, very grown up, very classy, and not too many people are gonna be wearing this. You know, many people are gonna wear Aventus. People have smelled things like Green Irish Tweed, which was a contender maybe for this list. This one, not so much, I think. So Invasion Bar Bar, one of my top three at the moment. The third one, I'm sorry guys, but it's less of a fun surprise, because I had to stick with this one. I had to stay loyal to, Creed's Bois de Portugal, and I, you know, I was thinking, should I put something else in? But I've got to say, when I, I re-sprayed some just to sniff for this video, and I thought, no, this, this has to stay in the list. 
it's the richest and most unctuous of the three actually and I kind of wasn't expecting that but when I've just re-sniffed them I found that. Uh, the notes on this one I'll give you the list we have bergamot, lavender, sandalwood, vetiver, ambergris and cedar. So this one first came out way back in 1987. Uh, it's quite an expensive fragrance actually. I haven't checked the price exactly for this one, but you're looking at uh, 100 mil or 50 mil bottle these days, and I'm pretty sure the 100 mil is, is well over the 200 pounds mark in the retail price. So it's expensive. From what I've tried and from what I've heard, the modern version, mine's an older book bottle, isn't too messed up. Batch variations are not such a huge issue with this fragrance, but let me know if you think differently. So it's got that lovely tart kind of green bergamot opening. This, to me, sort of dusty, woody combination of lavender with old wood. It kind of reminds me of an old bookshelf or an old library type smell. So it's, it's perhaps the most dated and old fashioned smelling of the bunch. It's apparently, it was Frank Sinatra's signature scent, they say. I cannot verify that, but that's the, the cliche that we always hear about this one. It's probably the most old school of the main well known masculine creed fragrances. Uh, another good choice might be Royal Oud if you want something that has a dignity and a classiness, but you don't want to smell so much like you come from the 80s or 90s. But I think Bois de Portugal for me, for the grown up man who's not afraid to wear something that has a slightly retro kind of scent to it, still an absolute stunner, still gives me that wow factor when I smell it. So if you like lavender, if you like sandalwood, if you like the kind of oak moss accord that we have in so many aromatic fougeres, I think this is actually classed as a woody aromatic, but these designations don't mean much. It's grown up, it's a man in a suit, it's a powerful fragrance. For me, probably more going to a wedding, going to a special occasion, nights out, maybe a little bit much for an everyday work scent, but I guess if you went easy on the trigger, why not? Guys, let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. Thanks ever so much for watching. What are your favorite mature smelling niche fragrances? I'd really like to know. Let's have a conversation about that. I'll see you in the next video. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Bye-bye.